Okay, everybody, I'm about to make a hanging stand for spraying cabinet doors, for spray painting cabinet doors. I saw the guy, he's, uh, uh, I, I forget the name of his channel, but he goes by the Idaho Painter on YouTube, and he's got a lot of good videos about spraying cabinets, and uh, I'm about to start on a cabinet project myself, so I'm going to make the stand that he uses or something similar at least and uh, here's a cut list for what I've uh, for what I'm planning to do now I wanted this all to be about six feet tall and four feet wide and uh, so I played around on Excel for a little while because I like my numbers to be uh, to make sure that I had the the numbers pretty pretty good before I started cutting so in order to make uh, this frame, I'm going to have two feet sticking out the bottom of a, let's call this a horizontal T. This is going to lay on the ground with a foot coming out two feet before and another foot coming out two feet after. Now, if I work up, I'm going to have a spacer, uh, a small piece of pipe coming off coming off of this and then I'll have another T and I want this T to be a couple of inches up off the ground but I want it to have a to be able to join a horizontal stabilizing bar across the uh, across the contraption here and I want this distance to be the same as this distance that seems simple but I saw that he had two couplings that were spaced in the center to allow, and what I'm going to allow is about an eighth of an inch in the middle, so that if you've got a hanger or something else that you don't want to slide around, there's going to be a little indention, and that hanger can hang between these two couplings and not slide around much. So in order to get this length to be the same as this length, or width to be the same, I've measured this out to where if I make this piece 48 and one quarter inches allowing for the drop inside of this coupling, it will be the same as if I make this upper piece with three pieces with the elbows and couplings included where I'll have one that's 22 and 3 quarter inches, another that's 22 and 3 quarter inches, and this piece in the middle is 2 and 3 eighths inches. So if I join this elbow to this 22 and 3 quarter to this coupling, to this 2 and 3 eighths to this coupling, to this 22 and 3 quarter to this coupling, it should be the same as, if my calculations are right, going from this T coupling to a 48 inch and one quarter to this other T coupling. That should make this, these vertical tubes uh, stay nice and parallel. Now below this, I uh, coming off of this middle T coupling, I wanted about two inches of space between this T coupling and the other T coupling, which I'm going to have here at the bottom. The feet on this uh, or legs or feet the state what's going to keep this nice and stable on the ground I'm going to have a T coupling with a two foot span of pipe coming off both the front and the back and I'm going to use these little caps to make sure that it all stays nice and level so uh, the length of these feet really doesn't matter I'm just picking two feet. I think that's a nice, good, stable uh, length. That'll give it four feet worth of uh, stabili stabilization at the bottom. That ought to be pretty good. Um, so, uh, in order to give me a about a two-inch space here, and to make this whole thing about six feet tall, I'm going from this T-coupling, to a piece that's three and seven eighths, then to the next T coupling on top. So a piece of three and seven eighths is going to give me a two inch separation between these two. 
or I should say that'll look more like that. And then my upper piece, I'm going to cut to 66 and 9 sixteenths. And when I add this coupling across the top, the whole contraption should be right at 72 inches or 6 feet. Now, as long as this piece and this piece, and uh, as long as this piece and this piece are the same, and this piece and this piece are the same, it really won't matter. Uh, but since I was playing around, I tried to get close to what would make the whole thing six feet. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, I'm going to start cutting my pieces. I'm going to start off cutting uh, one of these uh, risers. Uh, this needs to be 66 and 9 sixteenths. I've already uh, measured this piece out to that length. And I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with. Let me flip this around. I bought, I bought two 20-foot lengths of 1-inch PVC, and um, I figured that between those two, I could cut all of my pieces. Now, I don't have a truck, so I needed these to fit in my car. I asked the young fella to cut these in half. Well, he just eyeballed it and gave me an 11-foot and a 9-foot out of each 20-piece. Well, that ele those 11 foots wouldn't fit in my car. So I asked, asked him to uh, cut, uh, cut one of them again, cut a new piece to exactly in half, and then cut the other two down to 10 foot. And so that's what I got here. I got uh, four pieces that are exactly 10 feet. And I want to uh, cut this first one. I'm going to use this nice little cutter here. Now this is as cheap as they come. You can get some that are easier. You can get some that have a little more, uh, that have ratcheting action to them and will cut. Uh, you could even use a hacksaw if you wanted to. Although the hacksaws make lots of a, uh, make a little mess. They get lots of burrs that come uh, off the ends and this makes for a neater cut. So I'm just gonna use this one. This one will tire you out though. If you have gotta make a lot of cuts with this, your palm is eventually gonna get tired. So uh, you also want to make sure that when you're doing this, the, the way to do it is to line up on your mark and then as you're pressing down on the, on the cutter, you're also twisting. And, you're, and as you twist, you want this whole thing to twist and make a nice uh, even circle. Uh, if you torque this thing to one direction or another, it will give you more of a corkscrew and, you'll, uh, and you won't get a nice even cut. So I'm going to be careful that I'm lined up where I want to be. And then I'm going to start uh, gripping and twisting. And hopefully I'm going to meet up on the other side. And if I don't meet up on the other side, I'll adjust. But yeah, that's... Yeah, I just met up on the other side, and now I'm in the groove, so it's a little easier to stay uh, in line. And I'm just going to keep on twisting and cutting. And uh, I can feel it biting in. You know when you hit a sweet spot, there it is. I finally got through one end one uh, of the interior, to the interior wall. And once I did that, this whole thing... Sorry, I'm going off the camera there. This whole thing gets just so much easier to cut. And that right side's about to just fall and make a lot of noise. Oh, good. I caught it. All right. So this made a nice little even cut. Now, pay attention that when you go to join these with these couplings, they may not go in right perfectly. These things are made to some pretty good, some pretty uh, strict tolerances. And there's usually a little burring on the end here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to either go outside on the concrete or get a little sandpaper or something. But I'm going to shave this little edge off that came up as I cut. And uh, once I have that off, this is going to fit nice and tight. I'm probably going to tap this down with a rubber mallet or so. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my cutting and then I'll come back and talk to you as I'm assembling. All right now, see you in a bit. Okay, people, before I get to assembling this, I just wanted to uh, show you 
what I uh, what I did with these ends. Um, you know, I went outside and scraped these on the concrete, and that wasn't making a that was making uh, the same amount of uh, mess as uh, using a hacksaw would have. Uh, I tried using a file, and that was a lot of work. So I just got my finish sander out, put some 60 grit on my finish sander, held my finish sander in one hand. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just uh, slid these pieces across the sander. And as I did so, I got this nice beveled edge. So uh, there's your pro tip for you. If uh, you got a bunch of these low ends, uh, go ahead and get your sander running and just brush these across the ends. I probably took 20 or 30 seconds to each end and now they're all nice and pretty like I like. And uh, when it comes to uh, putting them in the fittings, this is going to be just a lot, uh, it's a lot easier. That fits in there just fine now. All right, we'll get to uh, assembling in a bit. All right, guys. Here we are going ahead and put this thing together. I already started doing a few things. Here's my two foot pieces, caps on each end. That'll stop it from rocking. I have one T right here in the middle. I have another T set right here. This is going to give me my stabilizer bar across. Here's that small piece. I think I made that. Yeah, I cut that to three and seven eighths to give me a little span between the two. Got my other side set up just like this. Here's my stabilizer bar. That's the one I cut to 48 and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and put these together. Like so. Like there you go. Next, I'll go ahead and put in my vertical supports. There's one and two. And now I've got my upper horizontal. Remember I had my elbows on each end two couplings that I separated uh, and put a small piece right here in the middle. This piece I cut to two and three eighths and it gave me just about an eighth inch, maybe even a little more uh, for uh, to put something in this groove so that it doesn't slide. And now I'll mount these. There you have it. I'll be able to take whatever rack I want to use and go ahead and hang it right there. Okay now, uh, we'll see y'all in a bit. Okay guys, here's the next step. I'm going to drill two holes, two pilot holes, down on this cabinet door. This is the bottom of the door. This cabinet goes along the floor. So I'm going to put two holes right here in the end. Hopefully I'm not going to break anything. And then mount these cup hooks, two of these, into those holes. Then I can hang this on a hanger. I'm going to follow the Idaho Painter's suggestion and since these are floor cabinets, I'm going to put my holes in the bottom and on the upper cabinets I'll do the opposite. And what I'll do for the side, I, uh, for the middle cabinets, if there's one on top of the other, I'll probably put that in the bottom too. So uh, uh, he recommended a 764th bit. I'm going to go ahead and try this. Um, 5 64ths and you see I put a little tape on it here so that sorry I put a little tape on it there so that I know where to stop don't want to go too deep 
So here we go with hole number one. Sorry, I'm probably blocking you. That's hole number two. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this here cup hook in. And that seems to be a nice tight fit, but not too much. I'm not trying to break anything. I'm just trying to get it in there snug. Now, I'll be able to mount this on a hanger. Looks like I have to open that. I have to open that uh, hook up a little more to mount on this wooden hanger. Seems to mount on this one just fine. Uh, that's the only problem with these hooks I bought is that they all came um, with a little metal disc around the just above the thread and they were hooked like this. I might be able to manage on a wire hanger, which would be no problem whatsoever. And that wire hanger looks like it does pretty good. So we might do something like that. I might have to find some way to make this to where this uh, holds together. But yeah, if I can find some way so that this doesn't bend too much, uh, that may be just the ticket right there. All right, fellas, I'll, uh, I'm going to show you a set in a second again uh, when I have this mounted. All right, hold what you got. All right, guys. Got my hooks opened up a little wider. Got this hanger. Once I put this, that's pretty stable. Hanging up there, that's pretty stable. When it's time to paint, I'll just spray around that door when I want the other side I'll just turn it around after this I can take this off and uh, hang it somewhere else to dry so uh, I like this I like this idea I'll give thanks to the many people on YouTube that are doing stuff like this that I could follow along with uh, if you have any questions want to make any comments go ahead and put them in the comments below Thanks. Have a good one.